to stand up tall and proud. I want you to speak up clear and In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to Abuki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Um, if you could take a moment to uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you like the content, I'd appreciate it. Uh, and if you could also uh, hit that notification button, I'd appreciate that as well. Um, Again, welcome to the show. Um, today, we're going to be talking about an article that I found um, that uh, should be pretty interesting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is trying to delve into what would Malcolm X have thought of Kevin Samuels? And we've already looked at. Well, I've already discussed, you know, whether Malcolm X would be pleased with uh, the modern uh, woman's uh, persona that is uh, all over the place nowadays. And uh, I just don't think that he would have a favorable uh, view of the modern woman, <clears throat> excuse me, um, persona. So um, what would he have thought about? Malcolm, uh, what would Malcolm have thought about uh, Kevin? I, I, you know, I think he probably would have had a favorable uh, view of Kevin, you know, and Malcolm didn't mince words when he talked about black folks, house Negroes, um, you know, anyone who was on the side of anything other than uh, the betterment of black people. Malcolm didn't have uh, have good words uh, or thoughts about those people. <clears throat> so. We're going to uh, take a look at this um, this article, and um, I'll give my commentary as usual uh, and where I think it should be given. Uh, let's move up here and take a look. All right, there it is. Here we go. What would Malcolm X have made of Kevin Samuels? What would Malcolm X have made of Kevin Samuels? Some serious food for thought. Malcolm X via Wikimedia Commons. Who taught you to hate the color of your skin? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to so much so that you don't want to be around each other? These are the immortal words of El-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz, better known as Malcolm X and quite extraordinarily. In the same speech, my all-time hero goes on to say the following. Why have I brought this up? Kevin Samuels, 
It was on Dr. Boyce Watkins's Instagram page that I learned of the untimely passing of Mr. Samuels. Up until that point, I must confess to knowing very little about the chap, in the way that I know Dr. Umar Johnson. But seeing as it was Dr. Watkins, who was largely complimentary about the brother, I thought that it would make sense to do a bit of research on the now deceased YouTuber, given the furor since his untimely passing. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there and we'll go up here and we're going to talk about this this, this segment that is skipped over. <coughs> Excuse me. Gosh. Um, says the most disrespected woman in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. And the only time a Muslim gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. We will kill you for our women. I'm making it plain. Yes, we will kill you for our women. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and pays the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put it in the direction of our women. Okay. And, uh, you know, hey, at that time, I think that that was um, that was the right thing to say. <laughs> but today you have black women saying that they don't need our protection. They don't want our protection. So are we going to force our protection onto these women? That's why I say that Malcolm was not talking about black women of today. He wasn't. But black women love throwing this up, you know, but then you have to say, are, do you have the the same qualities and traits of the woman that he's describing? We can go through them. Say we're supposed to respect our women, but when we try to respect our women, they disrespect us. When we try to protect our women. They tell us that they don't need protection. They don't need us. Why are we looking at us? They, we're thirsty if we're if we're looking at them uh, in a way uh, that is uh, what they perceive to be sexual, you know, which is part of the of the, the the other passage up top. Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? And that goes into the other aspect of this, where you go and you 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 say that you're a queen, you say that you're beautiful and all this, but you're not beautiful until you put in the eyelashes, you put the weave on, you know, you you put on the entire garb and disguise of what you uh, feel like is beauty. That's your queen disguise right there. You know. And you run around with that. And as long as you have that on, you feel like you should be treated better than any other human being on the planet. That gives you, uh, you know, uh, agency to basically uh, talk to men any kind of way. Whereas back in, in, in the day when Malcolm was was talking about these women, women respected men. They would speak to men on the street. You know, men would make sure that those women cross the street safely that they came to no harm. You know, the same thing would happen with old people. You know, you would look out for old people. There was a there was a, a code within the black community. There is no code in the black community now. Everybody just pretty much is doing their own thing. It's become a, a, a selfish uh, amalgamation of all kinds of, of, of personalities. So you cannot try to uh, to look at this without trying to take those other uh, things into consideration. So let's go on and look at this a little bit further. Um, OK, and he's talking about we get down here and he says, OK, why I brought it up is because, you know, Kevin, Kevin Samuels uh, of Kevin Samuels passing. Uh, and it was on Dr. Boyce Watkins' Instagram page that I learned of the untimely passing of Mr. Samuels. OK, and this this goes into another aspect of this, which is is really just uh, made it angered a lot of us 
uh, the way these women basically looked at Kevin and talked about Kevin when all he did was try to show them that what they thought was important with regard to relationships and what they felt that they deserved and needed in relationships, they really didn't need that. That's why he always said he, when he used the high value man, uh, you know, slogan, uh, it was to show you that, you know, sometimes we want things that aren't good for us. You know, like my dad, I should say, would say, you know, what looks good to you ain't always good for you, you know? So you might think that you want a nine or a 10, but do you have the pockets to maintain a nine or a 10? You know, are you going to be able to enter to entertain a woman who is of that stature? And a lot of times we, we you know, we come to the conclusion, no, I don't want that kind of woman. I would, I would much rather have a, an average normal woman who is pretty and live a good life. And that's what he was saying to these women. Wouldn't you do fine if you just had an, an average Joe? And then every one of these women felt like, why should I have average? Average was like a curse word to them. Believe it or not, Malcolm was average. Believe it or not, Martin was an average looking guy. A lot of those guys that went out and, and laid their lives on the, on the line were average working guys who did extraordinary things. And, you know, this Internet and this this uh, this these, these media platforms have have elevated people's palates to the point to where uh, they have. The taste buds of a king or a queen but they have the money of a peasant. But everybody's acting like they're rich, like they're taking all of these trips and they're living this high life. They're out here buying all of these big brands, but they're basically going, you know, they're, they're, they're living off credit and being and broke as hell trying to uh, present uh, a certain visualization that they feel like makes them matter. And that's what Kevin was talking about. He was trying to get people, get these women to get out of that mindset. And what do these women do? I'm still still to this day. I'm still having art. I have women who hate my guts because I will not let them disrespect Kevin Samuels. One of them came on and said the other day that uh, basically she was happy that he was dead, making all these these jokes and everything. And I let her have it. You know, she blocked me, but, you know, fortunately, some other people, you know, made sure that she saw my my comment on Facebook. And then she, you know, tried to give a response. And I replied, is someone speaking? Because if you have me blocked, you know, why are you? Why do you care what I'm saying? Why are you looking for what I'm saying? And then on top of that, I can't see what you're saying, even though I can see what you're saying. I'm going to act like I can't see what you're saying. That's why I responded. Is someone speaking? Now, this particular individual is not easy on the eyes. Matter of fact, she is very, very hard on the eyes, but she puts on the lashes and the waves and all of that. And she feels like she's up to snuff. She feels like she is able to then talk about people and, and you know, say that somebody's not good enough for her and all of these other types of things. Is that what we're how we're doing it now? You know, you, you look, you you feel like that if you have certain aesthetic uh, properties that basically that makes it to where you can talk about everybody else. Is this what the black community is nowadays? Because if it is, we have become so smart that we're dumb. We have went from quality to shit. And everybody who's living in this stuff nowadays, they don't know that they stink. They think that they're in the in the best position possible, but you're living in shit. So let's move on with this article. And what I found was not good at all. It would seem as though his entire shtick was based on defecating on black women. <laughs> it is one thing to exhort people to be the very best version of themselves, and it is another to create an exclusive brand disparaging an entire race of women. 
It's bad enough that you had Ronald Reagan demonizing African American women as welfare queens back in the 80s and Don Imus describing the Rutgers University basketball team as a bunch of nappy headed haws. But to have one of your own actively use the same sort of rhetoric as a white supremacist is beyond reprehensible. Okay, so here we have a uh, an individual who basically heard Kevin, but didn't listen to Kevin. <clears throat> Kevin didn't disparage black women. If you said something stupid, he lets you know that you, that you said something stupid. You know, um, if you came on there and you look like presented yourself like a hooker, but you felt like you should have a person who was in the top, you know, 2% of all of the men in the, in the world, then you're delusional. You are delusional because, because how, how are you going to stand out? What makes you think you can get that man? Have you ever even got a man in that same, in that same caliber? No, you haven't. So in your mind, you're fantasizing about this man that you should have. And guess what? This leads to the same scenario. And he showed it time and time again. Women ended up in their 50s still looking for love or either they're dying alone with cats. OK, so how many women do you have to get on get on there to say the same exact thing over and over and over? And then he takes statistics from this from sociologists who have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years. The same trends are going on. And not only that, they're getting worse. The Kerner Commission, the Monaghan Report, all of those things, Clark's uh, uh, work in the, in the 30s, all of those things are still headed towards the same inevitable end. And that is people are neglecting the real problems in the black community and putting all of this money into the women and the women are not doing what's good for the community. They're doing what's good for themselves. You know, we saw this with the cocktails with Queens They came out of their own mouths and said that, no, we're not a part of, of black people. We are a separate entity entirely. And we are black women. We black women need their money up front and separate. They don't even consider themselves a part of the black community. OK, as long as they get their education and they get their money, you know, then they're fine. You know, the black community is the black men and, and their kids. They only use the kids to get resources, monetary resources. OK, those are bargaining chips. And the government has made it to where that. Is. Acceptable. OK, so let's listen to a little bit more of what this this young lady thinks that Kevin was all about. also seen that the hatred for Kevin Samuels had as much power across the Atlantic too. Black British women were united with African American sisters on Twitter in actively celebrating not only Mr. Samuels demise but also the manner of his passing. For a minute, Kevin Samuels did trend on Twitter UK, which says a lot. While we must remonstrate with those who saw fit to mock his death in the strongest possible terms, I don't think enough of us black men did anything to call out people like him when he was alive and that in my book isn't good enough. OK, so here we have a sucker who's basically pandering to these women and he thinks that Kevin somehow was basically belittling these women. So he wasn't listening. All he heard. And, and we all know why men do this. You know, it's because they've been raised by women and under no circumstances will you will you besmirch a woman's name in front of them, no matter what she's done. She could be throwing turds at people and she's still a lady. OK, so I'm going to break away from this for a second just to show you this very same affect that you get from this guy. You see, uh, it, it, it tends to leak its way out out of all kinds of guys. Like, let's take a look at Mr. Joe Budden here. Uh, Let me tell you. Dog, okay. you doing Listen that to a girl true. is some corny nigga shit. I can see that. You being that Michael B. Jordan today, uh, allegedly sexiest man alive in all of these blockbuster my... movies. I agree. During your highlight week, you've probably never been more visible than you are right this second. And that's what you do to her. And if I bring back the white girl rumors, then it's going to sound even crazier. 
then it's gonna sound crazier. Cause why are you talking to our sisters like that on the red carpet? We only talking to white bitches like that. But I'm not gonna make it racy. They say I make everything racy. Mm -hmm. That was corny of him to speak to that girl like that. I'm not disagreeing. I would I would have made Michael a joke. B. Jordan. That's why niggas made call a joke you corny. Off air. I would have made a joke off air like word. Hey Creed. You know hey, what's saying? this nigga's name? I wouldn't have did that. <laughs> hey Creed. <laughs> in case you were confused, that corny ass shit you did is why niggas think you corny. Yeah. In case you were off a little bit mm -hmm. as to why you niggas keep thinking that money hides corny. Mm. Let me tell Dog, this. you okay. doing that to a girl. Don't be this weak ass dude right here. Joe Budden, sometimes he stands on the on the side of right. And then on the other end, he, he is effectively saying that basically what this woman did to Michael B. Jordan when he was in school growing up, her bullying him and telling him that he was he was a, he was corny and he was this and he was that. You know, and then when he makes something of himself, she wants to come and she wants to act like she was with him the whole time. She was supporting him the whole time. See, this is the type of shit that black men get in our community where people will shit on you all during your struggle to try to be something. And then once you become something, then all of a sudden, I always knew you was going to make it. I knew you was going to make it. Me and him were friends back in the day. That's how they do. This is how these people do. You know, he did her ass just fine. He did her just fine. She was on the, on the red carpet. She had been talking a bunch of smack. She had done a bunch of damn tweets and stuff. It was all over the place. If he didn't respond to that, he would have looked like a pussy. So by him responding to her, he, he did her just fine. He did her in public just like she did him in public. And then you have Joe Budden, you know, panda extraordinaire coming over here trying to protect her. No, he did her ass just fine. A man is supposed to stand on his shit wherever if he doesn't do that then he loses his stature he loses his respectability and that's why he set her ass out, out on that on that red carpet and in my mind and a lot of men's mind he reestablished himself as a man by doing that to her i bet you she won't do it again and if she does do it again she's gonna look less credible than she did before so it's about as much time as I'm going to spend on, on old Joe. I mean, and who the hell should be who thinks that that, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> Michael B. Jordan should be taking uh, advice about his career from fucking Joe Button. Fuck out of here. OK, so let's go on back to this uh, the story here. <clears throat> and we're going to. Go ahead and pick back up with it. Here we go. It is almost as though we, black men, have normalized disparaging black women through the ages. If you listen to rap music in the last 30 years, 1992 to 2022, regardless of the artist, there is absolutely no difference in the extreme misogynist content. You could argue with credibility that the only difference today between old school and new school hip hop is that dark skinned sisters get a far greater share of the disrespect than light skinned sisters. And this brings me. OK, so uh, he's he's you know, he's going from one trope to the next. You know, he's he's saying that basically all this misogyny was was started in 1992 and all of this. Look, uh, women were disparaging themselves. From 92 to 2022. Women have have uh, have uh, objectified themselves from 1992 to 2022. But he it, I guess that that has, has escaped his his notice, you know, and these women were buying this music and blasting this music. Dancing to this music. Music talking about the sweat running off a man's balls and they're running out to the to the uh, to the dance floor. Screaming, hey, so the, until they to start dancing to it. So, you know, you can't you can't have it both ways. It goes on to say, OK, you can argue with the credibility of the only difference between old and new uh, new school hip hop is dark skinned sisters who who's talking about dark skinned sisters in hip hop. Who was talking about dark skinned sisters in hip hop back in the day? No one. But the bourgeoisie that is in our community has always uplifted light skin. We call it color struck. 
we see it still to this day. <clears throat> so when you see um, instances of this on uh, what is it? Uh, Real Housewives of, of the Potomac or whatever, you know, where this this the young lady's on there. Her dad was a civil rights uh, um, a icon and she's on there saying that she doesn't like a woman. And pretty much it this basically comes down to the woman being dark skinned. And she got that from her dad, her light skinned dad who talked about another a, a young a, a woman that he was running against who was dark skinned and called her ain't your mama. So was Kevin responsible for that? Was the black man responsible for that? I think not. But everybody wants to blame the black man for how black women are being treated. There are other perpetrators out here who treat black women badly. Other black women treat uh, treat black women badly. A lot of the the, uh, the 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 abuse that is is levied against black women comes from other black women. These women call these other women nappy headed. If you don't have a have a, a lace front and the other women have lace fronts, guess what? You don't fit in. Black men have never said go out and get you a lace front. I think that would look so much better on you. None of us ever said that. My first encounter with Weave, I ran my hand through uh, 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 the, the lady's uh, hair that I was dating during the time, and it was uh, it was sewn in the back of her head. It was like a tail sewn into the back of her head. She had a head full of hair, but she just didn't have it long in the back. So. She had this tail sewn in the back of her head. So when I reached in and, and, and tried to run my hands through her hair, she got highly offended. I mean, went off. Don't be touching my hair, blah, blah. But see, that was just because I found out her secret. See? But we are not responsible for y'all going out and getting these long lashes, getting the weave, getting the lace fronts and all of that. And, and you know, you make mention of these these British sisters that are over there. They are just as delusional as the, the, the American women because the American women are teaching the delusion to the British women. Everybody wants to be like the American black woman. So what you guys put on put out on Front Street on these shows, on these videos, guess who's emulating that? Black women in Africa, black women in Britain, black women in Australia, black women everywhere. And not only that, when you're, you know, shitting on black men and all of this and saying you don't want them, guess what? All these other women love black men. This passport bro shit's been going on forever. Military men have been doing this forever. I read a, a, a an article out of the Jet from the 40s where black men were bringing home women from Germany, from Japan, from Thailand, from the Philippines, from everywhere. And they love those black men. And the black men then even back then even said that they respected them in a way that they had never encountered out of American black women. So here we go. You know, this, that, that, this, what this man is saying is being, as he has no proof. He has no grounds to say what he's saying, but he's been indoctrinated into this mythology of black men being the boogeyman, the all encompassing boogeyman against white women. I mean, against black women. So let's go on, get on with this article and get some more of this good stuff. Me to the very title of the post, what would Malcolm X have made of Kevin Samuels? I don't think he would have been too complimentary. <laughs> While he may have mourned his death, our hero would have had no problems calling out a man whose prominence owed a great deal to pulling down black women. Which is why I would say to every black man who reads this, Let's channel our energies into eviscerating colorism, self-loathing brothers, sexism and misogyny. Only when we do these things at the top of our voices, will we earn the right to attack those who celebrated Kevin Samuel's death. 
I am quite confident that this article will attract a great deal of opprobrium and I am ready for that but be rest assured that the one thing I will not do is shrink from conversations and debates that must be had. This is my two pence on the subject matter. What would matter? Well, you know, uh, I, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, the part that I don't agree with is, is that Malcolm would have looked down on Kevin. I don't think Malcolm would have looked down on Kevin in, in the slightest. Malcolm was a truth teller. Kevin was a truth teller. A man who tells the truth has no friends. That's a, a you know, a saying that uh, has been said for a long time. You know, it's an old saying. And it's true. People didn't like uh, Malcolm telling the truth and people didn't uh, didn't didn't like Kevin telling the truth. You know, one thing that they can't say about Kevin is, is that he was lying. Nobody ever said he was a liar. No one ever disputed credibly any of his facts, data and statistics. No one. So. Uh, out of all these women, out of all these intelligent women, out of all of these these pandering men, this guy here has said all of this stuff about Kevin, but he has never counted the, countered the argument. Matter of fact, he didn't even mention any of the argument. He just said that he was some misogynistic guy who basically tore down black women. And if you just read this and never listened to any of his content, you would believe everything that this man said. Kevin was far from any of the things that this man said. And, you know, really... Uh, for him to to say this is is really just um, it's crazy. But uh, I welcome him to come into the manosphere and and uh, and debate his position uh, regarding uh, Kevin and what Malcolm would have said about Kevin. You now he can feel free to come talk to me, or he can talk to BGS, or he could talk to uh, you know uh, Obsidian. You know, there are a number of people that he could talk to that I think would eat his his guts. Whether he can win here, if he tried to come out and tried to say of uh, these disparaging uh, remarks about Kevin Samuels. You know, he has offered no proof whatsoever, which is the same thing that all of his detractors have done, and that is to come out and talk about him and say all of these things. But guess what? Kevin's message is still ringing true. And guess what? Pearlie's using Kevin's talking points and she's destroying those British women that he was talking about. Black women over here in the United States hate Pearlie's guts, but they cannot get around that message. That message reigns supreme. Kevin is still decimating these women, even after his death. And I think it's really uh, unfortunate that we have a black man on here. His name is uh, Adebayo uh, Adrian or some. I, I would dare say that he's probably not even from the United States. He might be one of these, these uh, uh, you know, um, Nigerians, something that has come over here and, and is trying to, uh, you know, stake his claim in, 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 uh, in writing or something. But you don't know what you're talking about, brother. You really don't know what you're talking about. And I would uh, suggest that you write about some other things uh, that you would be better in. So uh, let me. Uh, let me go ahead and, and take his his article down. I think I've spent enough time uh, looking at his, his trashy article here. So. Um, you know, it's just it's unfortunate that. uh you know, you still have these people out here talking about Kevin, you know, and uh, Kevin will, will, would have, I think, been um, applauded by Malcolm and a lot of other people, too. You know, a lot of this, 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 uh, the way these women are carrying themselves nowadays is just, I mean, they're celebrating, you know, uh, whoredom, you know, everybody wants to be hoes. You know, you sit up here, I'm on Twitter and I, I have these women talking about, you know, when a woman allows a man to fly her uh, to his location that, you know, sex shouldn't be involved, you know. OK, well, uh, what would your grandmother tell you to do if a man, you know, you told her that a man was going to fly you across across the way and, and feed you and all of that? 
And uh, what would she, you know, what she tell you? She probably tell you don't go because that man's gonna be expecting sex, you know. But now we expect these these highly intelligent women uh, to to uh, not know that somewhere down the line that men are gonna want to have sex with them. Something has happened for for all of the the time that that we as human beings have existed on this planet. Now all of a sudden that that that's not a part of the equation anymore. Men uh, uh, wanting to have sex with you and wanting to have relationships with you. Uh, is is something that just doesn't happen anymore. So uh, now it's okay for women to play dumb, you know, and everybody acts like they're a victim. You know, I was victimized. He took me and flew me to to Los Angeles and and paid for my meals, put me up in a fancy hotel, and then when he tried to kiss me, I was appalled. And then you have all these women come up and they start talking to him, uh, talking to her and defending her on, you know, TikTok, Twitter and all of that. Well, uh, her behavior and what and the position that she put herself in is indefensible. I'm sorry. And you know what these guys should do? What you guys should do when these women, you know, are trying to get you to fly them out and whatnot. <clears throat> if she comes there. And, you know, she wants you to pay for food, meals and all these other kind of things. And you know what you should do? She, you should you should keep all those text messages and you should hand them over to the police and tell them that basically these women are, are pandering and they're trying to get you uh, to engage in uh, prostitution. And that'll that'll clear this up. You know, um, I just finished a, a, a reading a book called Ho Tactics. And the very things that these women are doing uh, is what everyday average women are doing. You know, uh, back in the day, people who were there were no freelancers uh, in, in, in pimping and hoeing. You know, there were these people were professionals and they didn't allow no any renegades to come in and to be running the streets, messing up their their reputation. But you got women out here now who are just regular, everyday, average girls, you know, some of them in their in their teens, some of them in their early 20s, some of them in 30s, 40s, 50s, every age range. And they think that <clears throat> not only are men supposed to pay for their meals, they're supposed to uh, buy them expensive gifts. They're supposed to pay their bills, pay their, you know, their, their rent, uh, utilities, all that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, car notes, uh, buying tires, fixing things in their houses and shit. And, and, and the man is not supposed to get anything, you know, and in Ho Tactics, it basically says you dangle the carrot that is the coochie in front of the man, but never allow the man to get the coochie. Okay, so he's forever going to be pulling that cart because the coochie's in front of him. So he's going to pull and pull and pull until his ass dies. But he's never going to get no coochie. And guess what? She got all of those goodies. Those goodies are just trailed out, out back behind her for years and years because she just used this man up like he was a natural resource. She just went out there and basically just harvested his money as he made it. And she never gave him shit. And people think that that's fair now these nowadays. They they think that that is the way relationships and and the and and interacting between men and women is supposed to go. And you have these pandering guys who basically defend these women when they are basically victimizing these young boys and men. And then when the man gets wise to it, then all they got to do is just yell police and say that he basically touched her against her will. And then she can get him put in jail and she can keep all of the shit that she got from him. And then they make up some slogan like believe all women, you know. So uh, and now and nowadays, you know, people just act like women can do no wrong. I mean, there's just this this fog that's just come over everybody. To the point to where uh, nobody thinks that women hustle anymore. Women are some of the best hustlers around. 
You know, if you haven't read this book, I think I suggest all men, all you guys should go out and go get this book. It's called Ho Tactics. Go look on Amazon. You get this book and, you know, get it on Audible, you know, get the hardcover. But you should keep it in there. You should give it to your sons so that they can learn how these chicks finesse dudes. Okay. now Kevin talked about finessing all the time. He talked about finessing a lot and basically how to avoid finessing. You know, caught girls on his show, live finessing dudes. One didn't hang up the phone, clicked over and was finessing the other dude. And he was listening to the whole thing. She didn't know she was still on the show. You know, you got people like Charleston White out here doing the same thing Kevin was doing, telling these women the same exact thing with a little bit of spin on it. But everybody's saying the same truth, which came from Kevin. But before Kevin, it came from Inyala Van Sands after she got it from um, her name slips my name. I mean, slips my mind right now. I'm, I apologize, but she's definitely one of my all time favorites as well. And you know, her books, Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Woman, that book came out first and it basically laid it out plain. That book has still never been refuted either. So we're still having the same problems. These women want something for nothing. You know, and now that these guys are, are going overseas to find their wives, finding prettier women, women who are in shape and whatnot, everybody's up in arms and offended. You know, so, you know, I'm going to, in, a, in a lot of different area, uh, you know, uh, directions with this. But I think uh, um, this is an all encompassing kind of, of subject. You know, uh, I don't want to hear anything about Kevin and his message unless you can refute the message, unless you can bring some facts, data and statistics that shut down what Kevin was saying. Now, I've read <clears throat> The Monaghan Report. I've read the Kerner Commission. I've read data that deals with the exact same problems that are still occurring that were talked about in both of those those reports. And these things are still going on and they are getting worse. And we can almost project where it's going to end. The birth rates are going down. You know, all of this stuff. That's why people, you know, look. BGS gives us a, a books to read, gives us uh, data to look at, you know, the same thing with Kevin. Kevin would basically tell us, tell these women about the same data that we've been talking about for years. And these women will read the data and they will just pluck out what they want to, to basically make them look good. Just like that, that young lady that I had on here, you know, the beautiful young lady with the nice lips and whatnot that was on here talking about, you know, um, uh, the, the report that had come out from the Brookings Institute, but yet she didn't tell why these things were going on and, and what the suggestions were, which was to give resources to black men and boys in order to better their situation. This has been the same suggestion that's been going on ever since the 30s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and even now we're still having the same problems. They are funding the girls and making the boys look like they are not even good candidates for marriage because they can't even provide for the women that they're trying to be mates with because they've elevated the women up so high above the men where it's just not even it's, it's, it just doesn't work that way. So these black men need to go where they are wanted. And I suggest the same thing. I advocate the same thing. Go where you are wanted. You know, if you can't find a good woman where you are, you need to get your passport and you need to get to stepping. Don't look back. Don't look to the side. Just look forward as you are getting onto that airplane and going wherever the hell you, you're going. Stay there. Don't bring her back here. If you do bring her back here, you need to live out in the country somewhere, you know, or make sure you have her, her, uh, your relationship locked down in a way to where uh, she's going to continue to be the way she is, uh, with the way she was raised. 
and continue to be traditional. But what America is producing is dysfunction. What these black women are producing on TV. And if you think I'm lying, you look at any anyone, any of the shows that are being put out right now. Any of the things that women watch the most of. And you tell me that that's teaching you something of, 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 of good stuff, substance and quality. And then you have all these women putting out podcasts saying that I'm I'm doing this to help women and to 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 do good for women and to teach women that they are worthy all while they sit up and watch women down each other and talk about each other's skin and talk about how fucked up each other's clothes are while they sitting up neglecting their men on the shows. You're married to medicine, got a husband on there, begging his wife not to take on any more patients so that he can spend time with her. She says no and continues to work. So then he goes and screws around on her. And guess what? She gets upset and can't understand why he's messing with this younger, more attractive woman because you ain't paying no attention to your husband. It's not rocket science, doctor. So that's what we're uh, what we're dealing with now. And uh you know, shit is not hard, y'all. If you look at this stuff from an objective perspective, you will not come. You, you have no choice but to come up with a conclusion, the same conclusion that all of us have come up with. It is dysfunctional. And the people who are sitting up living these lives like this, they don't even know that they're dysfunctional because it, they, they, they in their minds, it's working for them and it's not going to you know, uh, uh, hit them until old age when they see that I've been fucking up this whole time and nobody told me. That's where they are right now. So, um, again, you know, uh, I'm not going to let anybody uh, besmirch uh, Kevin's name, not in my presence. And uh, I just want you guys to um, to basically do the same. You know, this man uh, cared enough about the community and about these women to tell them the truth. They always say that they want the truth. I I want the truth so that I can can make the decision on whether I would, would, would be involved with you or not. But give me the option of making the decision myself. So then when you tell them the truth. Somehow. You, you're you're doing them wrong by telling the truth, but they they ask, they say they want the truth, they say they can handle the truth, but then when you give it to them, you're the villain. So you can't win for losing. So I you know I don't know what the fuck to do uh, uh, with regard to uh, uh, this situation, but um, you know get get some happiness in your life, man. And I'm gonna tell you if you out here and you're a woman and you're dealing with these men. And you're just trying to, you know, milk these dudes and, and have him fixing shit all around your house and all that kind of stuff. And you ain't giving him nothing. And he has no prospects of, of, of being with you in any kind of way. You know, you, 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 you're you hoeing. You need to own that you hoeing. You know, gone on, uh, put the sign out in front of your house. Uh, hoeing is going on here. And uh, go ahead and advertise your services. Don't hide. You're hoeing because you like being a hoe. Own it. OK. And don't be out here victimizing good, good guys who are just out here trying to find relationships or just trying to have some relations. OK. So with that being said, uh, I think Abuki has has covered this uh, quite uh, thoroughly. And um I, uh, I I think I, I think this has been a, a very enlightening subject. I hope you guys were entertained and uh, I hope that uh, you found this uh, to be as interesting as I uh, have. And um, I will see you guys next time uh, on the Abuki Cabal show. Please like, share and subscribe on your way out. Later.
Bruh.